dear students today we are going to discuss about person centered approach Carl Rogers is known as the founding father of person centered counseling it can also be known as non directive counseling or client centered counseling Carl Rogers in the year 1957 views that all human being are imbued with the innate potential to grow conducive atmosphere is necessary for the growth to occur those who do not have that conducive atmosphere are not able to grow normally which results in dark area in their self concept at times they get stuck in their life his major contribution on person centered approach has evolved from his experience with the people who are involved in delinquency and crimes self or self concept plays an important role in his theory how the self develops whether it is adaptive or maladaptive what are the role of significant others in its development what do society do for this these are the few questions addressed in this lesson we will be able to understand about carl rogers view of self and its influence on an individual's adjustment to the society now let's have a look on the objectives of this lesson the objectives of this lesson are to gain a biographical understanding of carl rogers to learn about basic key concepts which are the basis for person centered counseling including the self real self ideal self and self actualizing tendency the third to address the factors influencing the development of self before looking into carl rogers counseling it is essential to understand his personal life and how does it contribute for his theory of self or self concept he was born in 1902 in oak park illinois a suburb of chicago and was the fourth child in his family of six his parents were quite strict and emphasized moral standards and high control he also got engorged by his parents fundamentalist teaching dance play cards movies smoke drink and sexual interest are forbidden in his family he describes himself like sky solitary dreamy and often lost in fantasy this solitude helped him to depend on his own resources and experiences that is his personal view of the world this become the foundation of his personality theory self when rogers was 12 their family moved to a farm 30 miles away from chicago he got fascinated by the rural life and started engaging himself in farming with his father's support he started scientific farming with involving scientific techniques and advancement for farming he was about to make his career in agriculture but it shifted to christian ministry as of his father during his early studies at wisconsinism he was selected to attend an international christian student conference in beijing china 6 month stay at china made significant change in his philosophy of his life from fundamentalist to liberal later he wrote think of my thoughts comes to my own conclusions and take stands i believed in major turn around from psychoanalysis to client centered approach of counseling originated from there in 1924 rogers got his graduation from the university of wisconsin he received his phd in 1931 from columbia university and joined in the child study department of society for the prevention of cruelty to children in rochester new york he was involved in diagnosing and treating delinquent and underprivileged children in 1940 he got an appointment as professor of psychology 
at Ohio State University and began in enquiry on emotional disturbed persons. Now let us get into the details of self and self concept. Rogers used self and self concept interchangeably. Self consists of organized consistent set of perceptions and beliefs about oneself. We can understand it as those attributes or areas of experience about which an individual can say I am. For example, a client in counseling may define himself in terms such as I am strong, I can be angry, I sometimes feel vulnerable. You answer to the question who am I will give you the simple picture of your self concept. Self develops based on our conscious life experiences. The next concept we are going to discuss is development of self. Rogers viewed that self originates from two primary sources. First is our childhood experiences and evaluation by others. The type of care and concern provided to us during our formative period plays an important role of our development of self. It may appear as similar to the claim made by Sigmund Freud like childhood experiences only determine individual's personality later. But Rogers explained that the internal experience of the person about his life happenings will help him to develop self-concept. Let me explain in a simple example. Two kids are growing in a family where a drunken, careless, cruel father always try to beat them and the mother. This experience of humiliation has internalized by first kid as drinking alcohol is accepted. But another kid in the family who perceived it differently may form self-concept like I have seen the suffering of my mother due to my father's intake of alcohol. I do not want to create such a suffering to someone's life. I will not take alcohol in my life. Our life experiences are seen through individual's frame of reference, a model or a comparison to evaluate the experience. Reason for people not able to function adaptively to the situation is their distorted frame of reference. Coming late to office is not a big sin. Using bad language during conversation is necessary to influence other person. Wife has to listen whatever the husband says since she do not earn money are few examples which can cause problems to the individuals quite often. How other people evaluate us is another important source of self-concept. You are a capable boy, you are smart, you look good, you talk politely, you are brilliant. These evaluations made by the family members, peers, teachers and significant others may facilitate the individual to develop self-concept which is more adaptive to his life. That could help the people to follow means and routes to solve the day-to-day -day issues with less stress and strain. Moreover, they will not be generating or multiplying the stress by themselves. But in other case, you are not an idiot. You can't do anything well. You dumb don't know how to talk with people, you are not a good friend, are the evaluations which lead the individuals to believe that he is not intelligent, he can never do things right. Whatever the effort he makes, he is to fail. These non-adaptive self-concept may not allow the person grow normally and leave a scar in the self which will hamper his adjustment with the life changes. We cannot generalize the internalization of experiences to all people. Individuals experience is very much unique and in order to know about it, we need to be there in their frame of reference, which was an important skill Rogers emphasis in his counseling approach as empathy. Positive regard conditions of worth and incongruence are also plays an important role in development of self. Phenomenal field is another key terminology Rogers used in his theory of personality. What is happening outside is the objective reality. 
how do I take it into myself be the phenomenal field. It is our subjective reality all that we are aware of the field of our experiences including objects and people and our behavior, thoughts, images and ideas like justice, equality etc. This consists of our conscious experiences as well as non-conscious experiences. This subjective reality has a possibility to change when we encounter new experiences in our life. If we are healthy, we could see continuous change and growth in the phenomenological field as well as our self-concept. New experiences will add more insights to subjective reality and it expands irrespective of time and age. Phenomenal field is one's frame of reference that can only known to the person only. Rogers emphasized that a person's behavior depends upon the phenomenal field that is subjective reality and not upon the external conditions as claimed by behaviorist psychologist. An individual's perception and experiences constitute not only his or her own reality but also form the basis of his or her action. People respond to events in accordance with how they perceive and interpret the event. Ideal Self and Real Self Out of the process of perceiving experiences, adding meaning to them and testing them with external reality, there emerges a portion of the phenomenal field which gradually become differentiated and is called self. In addition to self, Rogers describes ideal self which represents what one thinks one ought to be and would like to be. Ideal self represents the self-concept that the individual would like to possess which is quite close to Freudian's super-ego. It is one's view of self as one wish to be. It consists of all those attributes usually positive that people aspire to possess. This you can understand in the figure displayed on ideal self and real self. When ideal self and real self are matching together, then that person will perceive external events accurately, will have the possibility of self-actualizing himself grow continuously. His perception of external reality and subjective internal reality is not deviant. It is healthy and is very much adaptive to individual's functioning. When an individual is not having proper matching between external reality and subjective experience, it has a risk of leading to experience anxiety and low self-esteem. Let us see this in an example. Please look into the picture displayed. This man's ideal self is I am fit. His real self is I am obese. He may not be able to behave similar to his friends who have body type as fit. He may not involve himself towards becoming fit also since his ideal self says I am fit. He perceives himself as fit but not having fitness could result in severe humiliation when he listens certain criticism from other people. Rogers in the year 1961 views this can lead to low self-esteem and severe anxiety. According to Rogers, 1961, normal healthy individual has ideal self that can be attained in the future by involving consistent effort from his existing level. He would be having higher valuing about himself and the goal which he wishes to attain in his life. His self-actualizing tendency will help him to put effort to reach to the ought to be self. I have an ideal self of becoming cricketer. I have the musculature, visual acuity, reactivity and possibility of developing stamina to reach state level cricket team. With my innate interest, self-actualizing tendency, I can involve daily practice, talk to the experts, watch other players, techniques and in near future I can be good states player. One of the clients in counselling practice 
shared that she is very good in studies, but her present complaint is not able to focus on studies. Her ideal self says, I am a good girl and I will study well. Not able to score good marks are the reality. But she is not ready to accept the reality and believes that she is very much good in studies. It may be due to low self-esteem which results in distorted ideal self. This incongruence between ideal and real self are the cause of discomfort one experience which pushes him towards help seeking in counselling setting. During the higher secondary public exam result announcement days, NGO operating helpline Befrienders offers more professional support services for students who feel very much disturbed by the results. While examining the nature of the problem, students have during this peak emotional turmoil times. We could understand that it is not only the low academic performance which made them feel humiliated by the results. Pupil who scored even high grades also get into this emotional pressure. If they are not able to compete with their friends, unable to fulfill the challenge made with their parents, peers, neighbours etc. They may have good grades comparable to the other person who got low grade or failed in exam but how do they perceive the results is fully depends on their own perception of objective reality or phenomenal field which is very unique to him. In the same light, when we explore the cause of farmer's suicide, it is not only economic or financial struggle which made them to finish their life but also the unfulfillment of the strong desire to give food to all fellow human beings may also pave way for living from this earth. During farmers financial crunch sensitive questioning of the person who lends money for them will also pressurize them to commit to an end for life. According to Carl Rogers in the year 1961 this congruence between ideal self and real self are the significant cause for severe anxiety and depression to occur as a result of environmental change. The next concept is self-actualizing tendency. Rogers believed that all human beings have one basic motive, the tendency to self-actualize. It is innate tendencies to fulfill one's potential and achieve highest level of accomplishments. Every seed of a plant consists of life and it can grow. When conducive atmosphere is provided to the seed in terms of air, water, sunlight and moisture, human beings are also provided with the capacity to grow and develop when the environment is right. In constrained environment like dried land, hard land, a seed's capacity to grow is hampered. Similarly, individual self-actualization will be constrained when the environment is not nurturing to the growth and development of mankind. We can observe self-actualizing tendency of the child which tries to walk by the age of one even after continuous failure to walk. When parents and caregivers provide the basic nurturing during the time of development, child develops quite normally. When it is constrained with the conditions of worth or negative regards, that can hamper the development of the self. So, each one of us has the innate tendency to grow. If at all growth disturbed, it is because of non-conducive atmosphere we encounter in the past. When conducive environment is given, we all can gain back the self-actualizing tendency and could show considerable change in the self or self-concept. During the developmental process, a child is attempting many actions and it is followed by the praise or punishment from the part of the caregiver. When it is praised, the child may get an idea of valuing herself as good. In other side, punishment leads to avoidance of the action further. We start valuing our environment on the basis of whether we receive punishment or praise by our parents. Further, 
severely punished parents if they put their love and affection as conditional to the child's action, child would be experiencing conditional positive regards. If love and affection of the parents are not dependent of the actions of the kid, they would be continuously getting their parents love and their self-actualizing tendency will not be disturbed. Unconditional positive regard and conditions of worth are the two determinants of self-actualizing tendencies. Rogers claimed that criminality and mental illness are the result of distortion in the actualizing tendency. Since self-actualizing tendency is distorted, criminals do not have positive regard for other people whom they need to interact. Let me summarize this lesson for you all. In this lesson, we have learned about the biography of Carl Rogers and the influence of his personal life in the formation of person-centered approach to counseling. Self or self-concept forms as a result of our own conscious perception of our childhood experiences and the evaluation given by significant others like parents, other family members and peers. What an individual experience in reality is real self and what he aspires for it is known as ideal self. Healthy development will result in more congruence between ideal and real self. When there are fewer matches between ideal and real self, it may result in anxiety and emotional disturbances. This will disrupt the innate self-actualizing tendencies.